the Constitution. Think back to 2001. When you had 9-11, okay, after 9-11 happened, the so-called white man introduced something called the Patriot Act. And what the Patriot Act did was the Patriot Act infringed upon American civil liberties. It gave the so-called white man the green light to infringe upon so-called constitutional rights. Now the so-called white man didn't need a judge's order to wiretap the, con the, the, the population. Now they can listen in on your calls. Now they can spy on you. Now they can call you an enemy combatant, which means when you're an enemy combatant, you no longer have constitutional protection. Now they can lock you up in Guantanamo Bay somewhere and say that you are a terrorist, man. And that's what they're doing now after the first great terrorist attack in America. The next time that there's a terrorist attack in America, the so-called white man is going to institute martial law and it's going to be right. lights out. They're going to be knocking down doors, dragging you out your house, and bringing you to concentration camps. And that is real. Whether you believe it or not, it's real. They're closing down military bases. They're closing down all these old buildings and places like that. And they're setting them up as concentration camps for you so-called blacks and Hispanics. Where you're going to be taken, you're going to be tortured, and you're going to be killed and try before military tribunals as traitors. Because guess what? If you call yourself a Christian, when they bring in martial law, that's going to be considered treason. Because you're speaking about Jesus Christ coming and overthrowing America. You're going to be killed. See? We have to warn you about these things. Right. The so-called white man is trying to institute, institute a microchip, man. They're trying to, some of, it, some of them microchips are going to be implanted in your, in your skin, literally. But the so-called white man has other microchips, too. I was looking on Google this week. The so-called white man has a new microchip now that you can swallow it like a pill, like a Tylenol. Mm. Swallow that thing. I'm going to show you the video right now as I'm saying it. Now Google executive Regina Duggan is pushing an edible authentication microchip along with an electronic tattoo that can read your mind. No, this isn't the script of a film about a dystopian scientific dictatorship. It's trendy and cool. Duggan, who is head of advanced technology at Google-owned Motorola, told an audience at the All Things D11 conference that the company was working on a microchip inside a pill that users would swallow daily in order to obtain the superpower of having their entire bodies act as a biological authentication system for cell phones, cars, doors, and other devices. So, oh, this... You guys see it? This pill has a small chip inside of it with a switch. It also has what amounts to an inside-out potato battery. When you swallow it, the acids in your stomach serve as the electrolyte, and they power it up, and the switch goes on and off. And it creates an 18-bit ECG-like signal in your body, and essentially your entire body becomes... Duggan added that the chip had already been FDA approved and could be taken 30 times a day for someone's entire life without affecting their health, a seemingly dubious claim. Would you swallow a Google microchip every day simply to access your cell phone? Privacy advocates will wince at the thought, especially given Duggan's former role as head of DARPA, the Pentagon agency that many see as being at the top of the pyramid when it comes to the Big Brother technocracy. Indeed, when host Walt Mossberg asked Duggan about this surveillance implications, she merely laughed and told him to swallow the pill. We can just tell that you you've taken the pill. I mean, the medical, app yeah. the medical application... Does Google now know everything I do and everywhere I go? Because, <laughs> let's face it, Here, we, we like you guys, but you're from Google. Just give him some water and let him take so, that. So I... In addition to the edible microchip, Motorola is also working on a wearable e-tattoo that could also read a user's mind by detecting the unvocalized words in their throat. It has been known for decades that when you speak to yourself in your inner it still sends neural spike volleys to your vocal apparatus in a similar fashion to when you actually speak aloud, explains Extreme Tech's John Hewitt, noting that the device could also allow covert voice activation as well as being used to detect stress and emotion, because Big Brother really cares about your feelings. During the D11 conference, Duggan even predicted that if the E-Tattoo was made to look cool with different artistic designs, 
Young people will want to have it fused to their skin as an act of rebellion. It may be true that 10 to 20 year olds don't want to wear a watch on their wrist, but you can be sure that they'll be far more interested in wearing an electronic tattoo if only to piss off their parents. The edible microchip and the wearable e-tattoo are prime examples of how transhumanism is being made trendy in an effort to convince the next generation to completely sacrifice whatever privacy they have left in the name of faux rebellion, which is actually cultural conformism and convenience. Check you swallow the thing like a daggone Tylenol. The so-called white man has another microchip, right? That looks like a tattoo. When you were little, they had those little tattoos you could buy from the store and you put some water on it and you put it on your skin and you have like a little play tattoo that when you took a bath it washed off. Well, a white man has a tattoo that goes right on your skin, just like that. Just like those little things you used to buy in the store, but there's microchips in there. And they're talking about getting those, mic put, putting that out and getting some of the famous rappers mm. to wear it to make it look trendy. To get the young people interested in wearing it. And the person that designed the technology is in the video saying that's what they're going to do. We have to warn you about these right. things. You can't go on Google and type in anything without Google spying on you. Google spies on you. It's called internet profiling. They want to know all about you, everything about you. That's why when you go on the internet and you type something in the search engine, the next time that you go to the same uh, website, you'll notice that all the ads on the website are ads catering to different things that you like. Like for instance, with me, I'm into you know, health. I'm into, you know, I exercise, I'm into health, so forth and so on. So I go on a lot of health websites and forums and read certain things about herbs and cleansing and different exercises to do, you know, to stay healthy. And I notice that anytime I go to a website, all the ads that are on that website are pertaining to that thing because they're tracking you, they're watching you. Because they, they, they want to know who and what they're dealing with. And when they bring this new world order down, they're going to be coming and looking for you. See? You can't hide. Right. The only place that you can hide is in the scriptures, in the words of the Most High, man. That's it. That's the only hiding place that you have. Outside of that, you're not telling a black woman about that. She's so concerned about her job, Ecclesiastes 12 and 4, ain't going to be no work. There already isn't no work. Have you not guys not been paying attention? The so-called white man is laying people off by the thousands. Okay? Just go to uh, 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 Google and type in job layoffs in 2000, 2013. It's me in 2014 now. Job layoffs in 2013. There's certain websites that will give you a company by company. This company laid off 8,000. This company laid off 5,000. This company laid off 2,000. This company laid off 500. And I'm going to hit you with something. The majority of those industries, you know who's working in there? Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Like living here in New York City, every time that there's budget cuts, what do they cut? They cut budgets from the damn uh, 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 um, teachers. They, they cut that down to teachers, you know what I'm saying, less teachers. They consolidate classrooms. That's why you have classrooms with 40 students in there. You know who the majority of the teachers are in the city of New York? Blacks and Hispanics. Or they cut down sanitation. They don't pick up garbage every day. Now it's every other day or every three days or whatever have you. You know who does those jobs? Blacks and Hispanics. Okay? They cut down the number of, of, of uh, workers on the subway. Little by little, they're phasing out the token booths. Right? And they have all them damn machines down in the subways now where you got to buy the metro car from a machine. You know who works in those booths? Blacks and Hispanics. Y'all not paying attention, man. Y'all not paying attention. Prophecy is taking place right in front of your eyes, and you can't see it. And nobody's warning you about these things. Ecclesiastes 12 and 4. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 4. And the doors shall be shut in the streets. The doors are going to be shut in the streets, man. When this martial law comes in, the doors are going to be shut in the streets. There's not going to be any work. There won't be a job for you to have. See? A lot of companies, look, look at Detroit. Y'all have heard about Detroit. Detroit declared bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the main automakers, the auto, the auto industry was based in Detroit. A lot of these companies are building the cars overseas, paying the workers much less. So there's no work. 
And then when you do find a job, you find a job that no longer offers you benefits anymore. Because when you were working for Ford or Chrysler or whatever company you were working for, you had health benefits, you had dental benefits, you had insurance, you had 401k, you had pension. Now they lay you off and you get a job that doesn't offer you nothing. Why do you think temp agencies are so big nowadays? You know why temp agencies are so big? I used to work for um, NBC. I used to work for NBC. A lot of people don't know that in Israel. I used to work for NBC back in the days. And what happened with NBC is that NBC laid off a lot of people, right? They didn't fire them. They laid them off. And they brought in a temp agency and they rehired these workers for NBC through the temp agency. Now, not the people on the top floors. I'm talking about the people that was the heart and soul of the company, the people that was working in the basement, like the people that was delivering the mail and the mechanics and the people that deliver all the other stuff and do the maintenance of the building and the elevator operators, so forth and so on. They fired all of them. So they had no benefits, right? And then they rehired them through a temp agency. You still have a job, but now you have no benefits. If you get sick and have to go to the hospital, now you go to the hospital and you get a bill, man, for $1,000 and you was in the mm -hmm. hospital for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't see what's happening, man. This is all prophecy. And nobody's telling you these things. Read what you got. I'm going to read it again. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. A grinding represents a factory. So the Bible says the sound of the grinding is going to be brought low, meaning there ain't going to be no jobs. That's going to be cut off. Somebody has to tell you about these things. Come on. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. So somebody's going to rise up at the voice of the bird because you ain't going to have a job. So what? Some of you so-called blacks and Hispanics, when this time comes, as we progress more and more, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get up in the morning and you're going to go take a shower and put on your best shirt, your best slacks and a tie. And you're going to go and look for a job early in the morning. And you ain't going to be able to find one. Come on. And all the daughters of music shall be brought low. And the Most High is going to bring down all these musicians and all this stuff, man. Everything in this society is going to go down. Go back to where we were. Where were, we, where were you at? Yeah, yeah, quick precept. Yeah, absolutely. Don't right, come on. Uh, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter nineteen, and verses of fifteen through sixteen. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, Break it down, bro. which the head or tail or rush may do. Right? So that day, there ain't going to be no work for Egypt. When you read Revelation 11, chapter in the 8th verse, it tells you that America is spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Because the same way we was in bondage in Egypt back then, we're in bondage in America now. And the word Egypt itself means bondage. Right. So I'm going to read it again. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail Branch or rush me. When John was on with the angel, he was looking afar off and he saw America and called it a lake of fire because America is going to be destroyed through thermal nuclear destruction. Right. When you read the book of Revelations, I believe it's the 17th chapter, it tells you that, that the ten horns are going to hate the whore and they're going to burn her with fire, man. They're going to burn her with fire. They're going to shoot nuclear missiles over here and burn this place with fire. And then Jesus Christ is going to come with an even greater fire with the chariots. See? That's what's coming. So it's not the time to be fearful, and it's not the time to be an unbeliever. It's time to take heed to these words. From there, let's go to the um, let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 2, and I believe I want to start from verse 1. Let me see. Again, this show is called the prophecy, man. We're just hitting on a whole bunch of different things, because... You so-called blacks and Spanish, you have to know these things. You have to know that these things is coming. It has to be said to you. Now, whether you want to take heed to it or not is up to you. Right. But it has to be told to you so that when these things come down, you can't say you didn't know. Because the Most High always warns people before he does things. Why do you think Moses went to Pharaoh? The Most High could have just destroyed Egypt. He didn't have to send Moses to prophesy against the Egyptians, but he did. The Most High could have destroyed the Babylonians. He didn't have to send Daniel. He didn't have to send Isaiah or Jeremiah. He could have just destroyed them. But he sent the prophets first. The Most High could have done the same thing with the Greeks, the same thing with the Romans. The Most High always sends prophets to warn first. He always sets up those watchmen that sees trouble coming afar off to warn the people. 
And just like the prophets of old, the people didn't take heed. Likewise, in this day and time, the people are not going to take heed. We already know that. But we still have to tell you. Read what you got. Psalm 2 mm -hmm. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Right, right. The, pe the heathen are raging. Who is the heathen? The so-called white man is the top heathen, along with the rest of the nations. What is the vain thing they, that they're imagining? They're imagining this new world order. These guys sit in the UN pursuant to the book of Psalms 83. They sit inside the UN and they plot our destruction. They ain't talking about nothing else up right. man. They ain't talking about nothing else. They ain't talking about our destruction. How can we keep the so-called blacks and Hispanics stupid? Oh, I know. Let's put a video out there on the Discovery Channel. Or let's put a video out there on the History Channel. And let's go find some dusty crusty, nasty Africans in Africa <laughs> and do a fake DNA test on them and say, this is the tribe of Ephraim. Right. Right. Right? <laughs> so that a real Ephraimite will watch the video and be like, oh, they found a tribe of Ephraim. Right, right, right. And right, them right, guys right, end up right, with right. a bunch of dusty <laughs> Africans, man. That keeps you away from the truth. How can... Let, let us cut them off from being a nation. Like it says in Psalms 83, man. The so-called white man does everything in his power in concert in conjunction with the other nations to keep you so-called blacks and Hispanics asleep. But that's a vain thing. There's no value in that because the cat is out of the bag. The secret is out. The Most High has woken up those of Israel that he wants to wake up and he's going to wake up more. You can't put the cat back in the bag no more. The genie is out the bottle now. That's, that's it. it. Right. That's it. So it's a vain and worthless thing for you so-called white people and you other nations to be plotting against the nation of Israel because we already know, man. And it doesn't matter how many lies that you put out to try to cast the seed of doubt. The only people that's going to doubt this truth is the ones that the Most High don't want anyway. Read on. Verse 2. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. Right. They take counsel against the Lord, man.